Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Morning Coffee and Photoshop Tips. My name is Matt Laskowski. Uh, so we, uh, I do this just about every week. You can find out more always on the website. Um, just go to mattk.com. You'll see a little events link up there. Today, what we're gonna do is a little bit something different. It's still gonna be a Photoshop tip, but it's gonna be in the context of a photo that came over from Lightroom. Now, it doesn't have to come over from Lightroom. You will see that you could open up any photo in Photoshop, but we'll, we'll do like a proper photography uh, workflow here for you. But the interesting part about this one is, is I'm gonna show you what I wasn't able to do in the raw editor and a little bit of the struggle that I have with certain parts of the photo, which is why sometimes I will jump to Photoshop for what could be a seemingly small part of the photo edit actually ends up being uh, something pretty big. Okay, let's go ahead and dive in here. Lots of people joining in, sunny Cayman Islands, nice. I am in not sunny Florida today. It's been raining the last two days, but should start to get nicer later on. All right, let's, uh, let's share the screen here. So this is a photo taken in Colorado. Um, early morning, you could see the light starting to come up and challenging exposure situation because lots of dark, dark colors here and then lots of bright sunlight coming up on that mountain back there. So fairly challenging when it comes to exposure. So this is, this is exposure wise pretty good. And I'm gonna go straight to shadows and highlights because that's where I usually start for a lot of my landscape photos. So make those shadows a little bit brighter and then here's where the trouble comes in on the highlights okay so i'm not able i want you to watch as i start to move the highlights adjustment i want you to watch the snow at the bottom okay so see how that starts to get darker okay look at the snow on the right hand side so i want to pull down my highlights in the sky but at the same time i'm starting to i'm starting to get I'm starting to pull down the highlights in the whole photo, which isn't really working for, for me for this example. So think uh, that's, that's something we're gonna have to come back to. We're gonna have to figure that out. Um, one of the things I'll, I'll do typically on my landscape photos is I'll take the brush. Uh, the brush is, I think, one of the most important parts of, of what I do to my photos. And I'll open up that exposure a little bit and I'll go down here and I'll paint just a little bit of exposure down there in the bottom and maybe even over here on the right hand side and heck maybe even over there too so just to brighten some areas up a little bit um, that'll make it brighter it's also as you can see there's some fresh snow on the ground so it snowed the, the night before um, it's got a very it's also got a very cool temperature to it so I'm gonna warm that up a little bit Okay, whenever you brighten up a darker area, it's gonna to tend to look a little colder. So I'm gonna warm that up a little, but I don't necessarily wanna go down here and warm the whole photo because to me, some of the allure to the photo is the fact that it does have a little bit of a colder feel. I can go a little bit with it, but I don't wanna to go too much. Um, I'm gonna pop a little bit of color in there with some saturation, just especially on some of these fall colors in the background there. I'm gonna go back to the brush tool and all of this could be easily done inside of Camera Raw as well. I'm gonna go back to the brush tool and I'm gonna add a new brush and I'm gonna do a little bit of dehaze texture and a little bit of whites and I'm gonna paint on the hills back here. All right, and that's gonna just sharpen, I don't even wanna say sharpen it up a little bit, just give it a little bit of pop, snap to it. Um, again, a little bit of color adjustment, it gives it some contrast, and then that white should help brighten it just a hair, but really only in the bright spots like those yellow trees, which is what I want it. It's what I want to really pop out of that area over there. So the brushing is subtle, but if I turn this off and then back on, you can see it's just those subtle little things that really help make, uh, help make the difference in the photo. All right, go over here. I'm gonna rotate this with my crop tool just a hair. And finally, if there's any lens corrections, I'll usually turn on that enable lens correction profile. So I think we're looking good here inside of Lightroom. If I hit the backslash key, you can see that's before and that's after. The last thing I have to do is the highlight. So we could go down the road of the graduated filter, which you know I can make it brighter. I can go down like that and 
or make it darker, I should say. I can go down like that. And the problem is, is I'm, I'm darkening everything and I'm leaving myself a lot of work to do, even with range masking. Even if I tried to range mask this and go to luminance, I'm leaving myself a lot of work to do to try to get that effect only in the sky, right? Not gonna say range mask isn't good for something like this, but I have Photoshop and I know that we can do it really easily there. And I think, you know, for me, I would get a better result. So we'll go photo, edit in, and hop over into Photoshop. What's gonna happen is we will end up there on a layer. And what I wanna do is use a tool in Photoshop. And it's one that sneaks by a lot of people. Um, it's a selection tool, but it's based on color range selections, okay? So what you do is you go up here to select and you go down to color range. And you think, well, I'm, I really wanna work on highlights, so why am I going to color range? Well, when I go into color range, I can select highlights as one of the ranges that it's going to target here, okay? And then the next part is a little bit more, a little bit more ambiguous in that there is necessarily no right answer to it. What you're looking for is, is you have to imagine that what's white is what's gonna be selected up here, okay? So whenever you see white here, that's what's most selected. And then when you see gray, that's semi-selected. So whatever we do to it, it's not gonna get the full effect of it, but if it's pure white, it will. So you're gonna play around a little bit with this. So the fuzziness slider, I'm generally going to keep a little bit higher in this example. I think of fuzziness as a feathered edge in the selection. If it's a low fuzziness, you're not you're going to have a very hard edge. The higher the fuzziness, the more the feathered edge, the more subtle your your gradations will look when you do this. And then range is simply if I go over here everything's selected, as I start to narrow the range, I'm telling Photoshop I only want you to select the brighter stuff in the photo. All right, so as I move that range over toward white, I'm saying only select the brighter stuff in the photo and the fuzziness is saying, really how strict do you want to keep to that? At a low fuzziness, you can see that bright stuff is narrowed. At a higher fuzziness, I'm starting to bring more and more of it in here. Okay, the more white I'm starting to introduce into the photo. Okay, so remember, we're after the sky and especially these peaks up here at the top. That's really what we're after to target with our selection. So I'm gonna click okay. Uh, we're gonna to go to our adjustments panel, which is under the adjustments panel. And I'm gonna choose brightness contrast. You could choose curves, choose whatever darkening adjustment you want. Really doesn't matter. They all mostly do the same thing. And um, you, know, you have to experiment a little as you start learning them to see which ones work better for your particular photos. But I find brightness contrast works well. So I'm gonna click on it and you can see it automatically added an adjustment layer with a mask. If I option alt click on this mask, I can see exactly what's targeted. And this is a very feathered mask. Uh, you can look at the gradations in the water. You can look at the tops of the peaks over here. It's not targeting everything, okay? Option or alt click on the mask again to get back into the regular view mode. And so now we'll click on the mask thumbnail there. And now I can take my brightness and I can start pulling that down. And so now I'm getting more of a natural way to darken some of the areas on the top there. Okay. So you can see, I'm not saying it's not darkening other parts of the photo, but it's letting me darken, especially the areas, the brighter areas at the top here that I want. I might even go back after doing it. I might even go back and do select color range one more time. I might even narrow that down, all right? So I'm gonna go to my fuzziness and start bringing, and bringing that in a little bit. So it doesn't select quite as much of the area as I was before, okay? Click OK. One more time, we'll head to the Adjustments panel, Brightness and Contrast, and there we go. So now I'm really starting to see the effect on the tips of those mountains there. I want them to get darker, and I don't necessarily want the whole sky to get darker with it, okay? I'm okay if it gets a little darker, but I don't want it to go crazy. It is a mask, which means you can click on it, 
press B for your brush tool and you can paint with black and white on it. So uh, you can take your brush, right bracket key makes it bigger, left bracket key makes it smaller. And now I can go in here and I can paint on that mask with black and white. See, I can bring white to bring back in the adjustment. I can paint with black to start to hide the adjustment if that's what I wanted to do. So in this case, what I would say is, is I don't want to hide, to bring this out anymore. So let's just paint that with uh, black down or with white down there. And the same thing over here. I don't necessarily want to bring that out anymore. I already did that part. So I don't need to go in here and do it again. And maybe a quick swipe of the brush over here because again, I already painted these areas. I made them the brightness level that I wanted to. So not necessarily something I would go in there and work on again. All right, so that's before, that's after. Again, we can adjust it just a little bit there. But now I have a real nice targeted way to work on some of those mountains up there. Yeah, I know it took me a few minutes to talk about, um, but when you're doing it, it's not necessarily, you know, you're gonna, you're actually gonna do it pretty fast. So uh, it's a jump over to Photoshop, but you can be in and out in just under a couple of minutes, I think. All right, when you're done, you're gonna go file, save. Don't change the name, don't change the location, don't do anything like that, no reason to, and then close it. And when you pop back over to Lightroom, and I do command tab on the Mac, I believe that keyboard shortcuts alt tab on a PC to uh, switch programs. So I come back here and if I were to do some finishing touches, maybe throw a little bit of a vignette on there because we can, why not? Throw a little bit of a vignette, uh, maybe come back over here to my basic panel. I might pop the whites just a hair. Something along those lines. Maybe even see what looks like a little bit warmer. Not too much, but just a little bit more warmth in there. So if you go back to our original, you can see I'll hit reset on that one. So you can see that's our before photo and that is our after. So once again, we got before and then after. All right, so part of what we got here is, let me see if I can make sure I'm sharing with you guys. I think I should be. Uh, part of what we got here is also, um, you know, it gave you a couple of tips. So I probably should have said in the beginning, but if you have any questions, I'll, I'll, you know, you know, I give a, I give some tips, but the whole premise of this is to um, answer any questions that you guys have along the way. But the the takeaway from something like this is, I think Lightroom and Adobe Camera Raw and most of your raw editors are great at the global level of things to, to, to do big changes to things um, where I find that sometimes they'll affect the whole entire photo. They do give us ways in those programs to mask and do those things. I just find sometimes Photoshop with its selection tools can be like almost instantaneous. You know, it's almost an instant selection. And, and if you know how to use them the right way, you can get some really feathered fine tuned selections that, that you just can't get any way else. So, um, and I would also say that um, everybody's eyes are a little bit different. So sometimes some people see one thing that other people don't see. And that don't, don't, don't discount the fact that that makes a difference in your photo editing. Uh, let's see here, got a couple questions. So somebody said, uh, Christy, Kirsty said, do you paint on that mask back to front? Um, doesn't really matter, Kirsty back to front, front to back, you know, you're, you're painting on the mask. The only thing the mask cares about is whether there's black or white on it. It doesn't care in what order uh, that you put it there for it. Uh, we got another one here. Let's see here. Did you see my question regarding graphics card recognition issues with the latest Photoshop update? Uh, it's possible I did see your questions. I, I get a lot of questions during the day. Um, anything that has graphics card in it is just something I, I can't even begin to troubleshoot. So um, there, there's not a whole lot that I get. Anything that's got the word crash, graphics card, Photoshop is not acting or Lightroom is not acting the way it should. Unfortunately, there's just not a whole lot I can do for it because I, I can't troubleshoot software and hard, hard work glitches. Uh, let's see here. Why not use a curve to adjust the white level directly in Photoshop? As when I went into Photoshop, remember I used the brightness contrast adjustment. Um, I had mentioned that you could use any darkening, brightening uh, feature that you wanted. So levels, curves, there's even an exposure adjustment. So you can use whatever one that you want. I like brightness and contrast. Uh, let's see here. 
We got one from Frank. Uh, hey Matt, I know hard drive space is cheap, but does duplicating the background as opposed to creating a new layer increase the file size? Uh, it will. Uh, if you duplicate the background layer versus adding an adjustment layer, um, and also Frank, the best way to, to test these things out if you've got questions like this is open up Photoshop, duplicate the background layer, save it as a PSD, open it up, do what I did and add an adjustment layer, save it as a PSD, and you will indeed see that the one with the adjustment layer is smaller than the one with the duplicate layer. Is it small enough to warrant any change in workflow? I don't think so, uh, but you can always give it a try and see how, uh, how small it is. Uh, let's see here, Lucia. How would you solve banding issues when trying to darken the sky? Um, banding, sometimes you can blur the sky. So banding is usually something, um, some lower quality monitors. It's just because you see banding doesn't necessarily mean that banding is gonna show in the final photo. But if it does, there are some, some blur techniques out there. I don't really have a banding photo that I can demonstrate on it here, but um, you can consider blurring some of the sky to, uh, to take care of some of that banding. Um, Kirsty followed up with, no, I mean, you painted white rather than black. Sorry for not being clear. Um, white and black just, you know, white shows the adjustment. So if I was making a darkening adjustment, uh, white will show the adjustment, black will hide the adjustment. So you just, you paint with white and black depending on, on what you're looking for from there. So, um, you know, if, if I was painting with white, I was trying to show the darkening adjustment. If I was painting with black, I was probably trying to hide it. Uh, let's see here. We got one from Leon. So I downloaded a lot of individual XMP Lightroom template files into a folder, not zip. Can I import these presets into Lightroom on their own specific folder group, rename this folder? Uh, yeah, Leon, just import them in. And once they're in there, you can move, rename, change, make folders, the whole nine yards once, once they're inside of there. Um, David says, do you create new folders in Lightroom for organizing presets? Yeah, I, I put landscape presets into a landscape folder and um, portrait presets, wildlife presets into a preset folder. It's a little, uh, I will sh let me show you this one because it's a, little, uh, it's a little wonky the way Lightroom makes you do this. So, so you can't, you used to be able to, and I don't know why they changed it. Um, you used to be able to just go into your presets area over here and you used to be able to just right click and then just go in and add a new preset folder slash group. So you can't do that now. What you have to do is add a preset, all right? And then under group, go up to the top and choose new group. So it's just, and add a dummy preset, like just make a preset that does nothing. It doesn't matter, but just put it into that new group. Once that group is there, now you can take Lightroom presets and drag and drop between different groups inside of there. So it's just, I don't know why it used to be nice. You could make a folder, but unfortunately uh, you can't do that anymore. So uh, looks like we got all of our questions there. So thank you guys. I really appreciate you joining in. Uh, for those of you that are wildlife photographers, stay tuned because I am putting the finishing touches. Today is Tuesday the 20th and I'm putting the finishing touches on my wildlife photo editing secrets course that will launch in two days. So swing by the website, if you're a wildlife editor, this is, this is turn out to be one of my favorite courses because uh, there's just so many fun things that I found I can do to my photos. So uh, happy and excited to share it with you. Hope you guys have a great rest of your day and I'll talk to you again soon.